And this is the Two Dogs Howling Under One Moon podcast. And I am one of your gr- fantastically not good looking hosts, Cletus. And as always, I'm Brutus. And we're joined by the man, the myth, the legend, the guy sitting clear in the back, our editor, our producer, but most importantly, He's not a complete editor. I just he edits the audio for us and pushes buttons. Particular mind. Th- thanks for ruining my great thing of what I was getting to. <laughs> you know, now we're just gonna have to start over the podcast because you fucked it up. <laughs> and it's your. Yeah, I know it is. I know it is. You talking about the techie? Yep. Yep. He's the techie. Yep. All right. Start us back over. We make it. Congratulations. You have fallen into our trap that we laid for you to make you feel really shitty about yourself and self conscious. We planned this for about a week. Up top. You guys suck camel dicks. You wouldn't know what camel dicks are like to suck. I wasn't in the Navy. (laughs) (laughs) Actually, you were in the Navy. There's semen. It's been a long day already. Like, leave me alone. Fuck you. Fuck both of you. (laughs) You know who is great, though? Who? All of our listeners. Oh, yeah? Yeah, all of our listeners all around... The world, including the land down under, yes, and the, your favorite place that has the best of the curry worsts, Germany, and the country I wish to visit again sometime soon, oh. Singapore. Yep, and uh, some fantastic listeners from Ireland, and. Our newest listener, which we talked about two weeks ago. Was that two weeks ago? Yeah, I think we started gaining listeners in the motherland. About two weeks ago. Yeah. So if we have the motherland and the fatherland listening to us, are we the children? That would make a lot of sense about this podcast (laughs) if we were the children. If we're the children. Yep. So uh, should we be professional now? I suppose it's time to be professional. Wait, this is the Two Dogs Howling Under One Moon podcast. We're not professional, but we're trying things. We're trying to be professional. We are now breaking to this new segment from sponsored by TA Minor and Associates, our corporate sponsor for this episode. Go to taminor.org to see what they can do for you. All right. So this one we're going to talk about is the Security Industry Association, SIA, and the Electronic Security Association, ESA. So they've decided and partnered to launch the FAST Foundation, which is the Foundation for Advancing Security Talent. It's a nonprofit designated to help promote careers in the physical security technology and life safety industry. Hey, we're a part of that. (laughs) Hey, isn't um, just basically thinking out loud which is normal for us to do is isn't uh sia and esa already non-profit so they just created a third non-profit i don't i'm not 100 percent sure but what this is trying to do is it seeks to help companies through outreach to schools colleges and universities to increase awareness and exciting and rewarding careers available in security and research to help to do research and stuff and continue in education and stuff. Yeah. Stuff, 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 stuff. It, all, it also helps uh, people find jobs. Uh, co- companies, will, will companies it help, help us find jobs. Um, you know, who can help us find jobs? Who? Our listeners by uh, going to taminer.org or, and contacting uh, them there. Okay. 
but they are going into and trying to create more outreach programs for colleges and universities. We'll have more conversations about this uh, off podcast. At T Road tonight, when we get to go to T Road, yeah, or I mean Texas Roadhouse. I forget we gotta you know spell it out like that because that's just. I hear the rolls are rolling. I, I I also hear their buns are glistening, and I also hear that their steak is sizzling. Man, word association, man. <laughs> <laughs> We're pretty good at that, right? Yeah, we are. We're pretty good at it. It's like our two brain cells actually work together sometimes. Yeah, our two brain cells just bounce around inside of our brains and each other's like smacking each other. Just like, you know, when they show like the photos of like atoms, like in a box, like in a gas state, and it's like, bing, 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 bing. like that's our brains. I was going to say it's kind of like Pong. Because we're kind of slow, so we have to watch it. Bounce. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then it hits the other, and then it, and then it gets to you, and you're like, ah, and then it bounces back to me. <laughs> and by the time it reaches one of us, we usually forget halfway through how it got there. <laughs> this next portion of this podcast is going to be sensitive in nature and could cause trigger warnings for those uh, listening or viewing. If you have if you have trigger warnings or PTSD to shootings or any other mass casualty events, please advise in it and fast forward uh, through this portion. We will let you know when that it is safe for you to come back for the video listeners. Thank you, and we hope to hear you on the other side. Viewer discretion advised. And we're back. Yeah, we are. And what we've gathered out of this is, is Brutus really just needs everything spelled out for him. It's been a long week already. I'm thinking about Friday. Let's be honest. You just want to play Flight Simulator. Yes. And Farming Simulator. Yeah. Yeah. I also want to play Texas Roadhouse Real, Sim Real Life Simulator here in about an hour. Yeah. We still have a lot of work to do in that hour. Exactly. Like, talk about the sensitive subject that is the Mandalay Bay shooting. Yes, it's time for our very first case study. Mandalay Bay shooting. Which was, if I'm going to remember correctly, because the techie doesn't have our notes pulled up for us. I'm just giving you a hard time. I love you, techie. Um, took place on October 1st, 2017. It to, uh, I think it was in the morning, like 2 a.m. or 11 p.m. It happened 10.05 to 10.15 p.m. Jeez, how do you not know this? I'm sorry. <laughs> I have a lot of things that I have memorized, and that one is just a little bit fuzzy, all right? It was during the last huh. performance of the festival. <laughs> I thought we were going to be super serious about this one, and you're sitting here <laughs> cracking jokes because the techie's whispering sweet nothings into the ear and answering these things for you as he's pulling it up on Google. No, it's pulled up. <laughs> it's pulled up on Our on tele. his note sheet. It's just a matter of I'm laughing because you are just sitting over here like a, a fish in shallow water. Like shit, I got to get into this deeper part. <laughs> So anyway, so yes, there was a music festival going on. It was a country music festival, I believe, that was going on. Um, and it ha happened during the Highway 91 Music Festival, as the techie is correcting me. Um, it was Tarek, um I, I would love to help you, but I don't know where you're trying to go. <laughs> I was just trying to lay out the timeline and location okay ready 
Music festival. Music, yeah, the music. So, fe- so the music, music fe- festival is across the, the street, street from, from the Mandalay Bay. Bay. Yes. Wow. Okay. Set. Las Vegas, New, not New Mexico. <laughs> I may have visited there a time or two. Las Vegas, Nevada. Sin City. And it's right off of, actually, I believe Mandalay Bay is the first hotel on the Las Vegas Strip when you're coming from the south. Wrong, but semi right. It's the the large. It's the first one that's a major large hotel. There's other small. Oh ones yeah, there. well. Okay, yeah. There's also I'm not, construction I'm not, I'm not, lots. I'm, I'm not gonna try and argue that right now with him. And it was, if I remember correctly, it's literally right across the Vegas Strip into an open lot next to. Uh, McCarran International Airport, which is the internet airport. If you're flying into Las Vegas, you fly into. Also, on a side note, it's where just another airline flies out of. You know, the guys who fly Area 51 workers out to Groom Lake. Yes. That's just a little fun factoid for you. Want to know what else is a fun factoid? Go for it. That... The Mandalay Bay swimming pool closes at 5 p.m. every night. So that way, everyone goes inside and starts gambling at 5 p.m. And it's stupid. I'm not going to get into pool and issues in Las Vegas because I swam in the bathtub because somebody didn't open their pools even though they're supposed to be open. But I'm not mad. We just know not to... What properties to visit. Exactly. But on a more serious note, um, the Mandalay Bay shooting, uh, I I believe he was on the... Um, he was in one of their suites. The top, the, um, on the 32nd floor. Yeah. And like, I think it was like the... Was, I thought it was the presidential suite he was in or something like that. Yeah. I. He So he got comped. I know he got comped. A room at Mandalay Bay. He got comped a room because he's a high roller. He right. goes there and spends a ton of money. Right. Or did. Did. Yeah. And a little foreshadowing is that? <laughs> and he went and got that room and then he got the conjoining room right next to it. So he had two rooms conjoined suites right on the same floor. And they had interlocking doors, right? Yes. If I remember correctly. Yeah. And then, um, and if I remember correct, also, if I remember correctly, he put all his, like, hit all his guns and ammunition in just bags and wheeled it up there on one of those fancy bellhop carts. Yes. Which. And he had he actually had a bellhop help him do it. So he got a leap. And they yeah, and they used the freight elevator instead of the main hotel elevator. What Mike I guess I have so many questions now. Why would they use the freight elevator instead of the regular hotel elevator? Because he's a high roller and he requested, um, Hey, can we just use the the freight elevator? Yeah, sure. Fair. So then It's all right. There's a lot of security red flags that are happening already. I want to pick your brain with the legal side. So does that bellhop get charged? Theoretical world, because we know it didn't happen as far as we're aware or any documents from our research that we did. Um, the bellhop did not get charged. Would he, could he be charged for uh, accessory? accessory? He doesn't know. Right. That's like that's like you sitting outside of a bank and a bank robber runs out with a bunch of money and tells you drive. Are you gonna be the getaway are you are you considered a getaway driver at that point and get arrested for robbing the bank? No. He copped in the car and threatened you. Right. Granted, it's not quite the same thing because he didn't threaten him. Right. But it's the same thing. It's right. Just food for thought.
I think you're close. Uh, so the techie's whispering in our ears about a barista killing somebody or giving coffee to somebody who's about to kill somebody. Um, you're doing your job. Yeah. You're not. That's like going to a gun store and buying a gun. And then, the and then the person walks outside of the gun store and kills somebody. Are you an accessory to that murder because you sold the gun to them? You could argue, yes. Legally saying, uh, uh, am I limited? As long as the gun, assume that the gun seller did everything correct, did a background check, did fine, the person walks out, shoots the first person they see. They're not an accessory to murder. Right. I'm just saying you could, I could. All right, we're not in California, so I don't know why you're trying to argue this. Unless, I'm not, you're, I'm unless just, you're saying I'm, you really want, wish you, li you li still lived there. No. I never lived there. But you talk about how much you love San Diego so much. I practically lived there. There's a difference. I'm just saying, we don't want your communist bullshit <laughs> spewing out of your mouth. That's totally pick on Brutus Day. I see how it is. It's all right. Somebody gets to pick on somebody, and it's always you. Yeah, I know. Anyway. I'm still upset because you want to play Flight Sim. I can and tell. You didn't invite me. Well, anyway, I want to get back to our main topic. We can't have too many squirrel moments. We said we were going to be serious today. It's pretty difficult today. I know. But prior to him getting the hotel rooms, he had already gotten those hotel rooms prior, a month prior. So he had cased the rooms already. Right. And so, um, you know, it is definitely... A pre-planned event. Premeditated. Premeditated. If we want to use legal terms, yes. Premeditated. And uh... so the techie is whispering information we didn't know. In our little well, research, I didn't go into the in depth on the other side, but that is a good point to bring up that he was casing other hotels and places throughout the United States, like Chicago and Boston, yeah, um, with large event centers by the um, hotel. Like, I wonder if it would be the same event center that we were at in Chicago. Yeah, that's what I was just thinking because I can't remember the name of the place. But there's definitely hotels overwatching that whole entire area. Yeah, because there's even though no, it's connected to the, the center. Yeah, the, the convention conventions. center. Sorry, now my security brain's just scurrying about a thousand miles an hour. As we were in, it was about this time. Uh, no, I was gonna say it was about this time last year that we were in Chicago. We're about a few weeks out, but yeah, yeah. Um. Speaking of that, if we were to be going, if they didn't switch this convention to online, we were actually going to try and do some live shows from there. Exactly. But they didn't, so it's sad now. Anyway, um, what other um, important factors? Do you, Techie, do you recall the specific number of people attending the um, country festival? There, well, there was over 400 people injured. Right. It, okay, sorry. There's 400 over 400 people injured due to due, due, due to gun fire. Over 800 people due to mass chaos. Exactly. My guess is probably close. It's a large. It's a large area. So. Above five, uh, above a thousand, less than I'd say ten thousand. Yep. But going to, yeah, pre-COVID times, times. Yeah, yeah, can actually, you know, be together. Yeah. We're not actually together. We're two holograms. The way my shirt's blinking on the screen, I'm definitely a hologram. You are a hologram. We're not in the same room. I know. We're six feet apart too. I'll show you six feet apart. 
<clears throat> Moving yeah. on. Uh, so he, there's no alarm on the windows. The windows were supposedly rated hurricane glass. So, but he busted them out with a hammer. Wow, that like. How hard do you have to hit with a hammer to break that glass that's supposedly hurricane rated? Well, I don't know because he was on the inside. Right. It's usually from the outside that it's treated. So I don't know from the inside how well it's treated. That's something that um, if we get a a pane of hurricane glass, maybe one of our listeners wants to send it in. Or something very similar, then we can try it and destroy it from the inside. See how easy it is to break it from the inside compared to the outside. So, like two pieces. So, so real quick before we hop into a sponsor break, because that's what we have going on next, I believe, is a sponsor break. If there are any objects you guys would like for us to either destroy or like test, um, please send it to us or get in contact with us so we can send it and we will video it and make it part of the podcast, especially if it's a security related product and you want to test the strength and condition of said product. And now for our sponsor. Thank you to our sponsors for their fantastic sponsoring of this podcast. Was that one or all three of them now? Um, that was uh, one there. And then two other fantastic sponsors that we have uh, is TA Minor and Associates, who as well, I believe, had an ad re- is going to have an ad read. And then we are now the official video software slash our official yes video software um streaming streaming platform platform yeah product is streamyard uh streamyard is sponsored this uh the sponsored this podcast so if you click on the link in the description uh, and go there it will uh you guys can get some uh sweet deals yeah, check it out, and I'll make sure when we get it up on to YouTube, we'll have the link there as well. Not to mention... The, you mean the link that I said for them to click in the description? Yeah, that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I forgot we were doing descriptions when we, you know, like, two separate entities, YouTube, Anchor, you know, I was like, well, we still got to type a description up for YouTube, so I was going to put it again there, so... You know, and, I'm, and, I'm running and, really slow today, if you can't tell. I appreciate you just stop screwing pong. with me. Boop, boop, <laughs> boop, boop, boop. And now it's out of frame and nobody knows where it fucking way. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate you giving me some slack today just a little bit. All right, so let's talk about how he had thousands <laughs> of rounds of ammo and weapons. Modified weapons, too. Modified. I mean, it's a modification. They are now illegal. Yeah, which I I, I understand, but I I don't think that bump stocks should be have been made illegal. But that's besides the point. So yes, he was using modified or using a bump stock on AR fifteens. What? Just my crazy brain thought of like when we go to the range, like did he have speed loaders? Did he have them all, his thousands and thousands of rounds prepackaged to in magazines, or did he like have some have somebody assisting him do this? Well, he. We're not getting into conspiracy theories here because there are conspiracy theories that he couldn't have done it alone with the amount of shots that were fired for the amount of time that was fired. It wouldn't have been physically possible. Kind of like Lee Harvey Oswald type. Gotcha. Okay. Things. Okay. Um, maybe we'll revisit that conspiracy theory at a later date. Yes, maybe in a more lighter episode. Exactly. I don't know. This has been a little bit light because we're just 
very yeah. laughy today for some reason. But yeah, I think that's our natural way of do it, dealing with it. But we're trying to be serious here. Yeah, we are. Um, but he shot the. Uh, I don't remember the exact amount of rounds he shot. One thousand fifty-eight, as I was whispered into my ear. <laughs> One thousand fifty-eight rounds were fired, and he. I know he had. AR fifteens, AR tens. Um, so we're talking over fourteen AR fifteens. So we're talking at least a five five six slash two two three capability with the AR fifteens, and then you're looking at a uh, seven seven six two by fifty one slash three oh eight capability with the AR tens. I'm not getting into the gunsmithing here, but I know I'm wrong. Some more 308. And a 30. That's what he committed suicide with. Ah. Uh, okay. That makes sense. So, <clears throat> so all of that just to only go through a thousand rounds. I'm assuming with a bum stock too. And then I'm assuming, I'm just going to assume, unless the techie tells me otherwise, that it was 100 round drum magazines. Quite a few of them, he says. So at least probably 10, right? You would assume. Yeah, yeah but yeah, there's, oh, there's a lot of things here. And then also, I've actually fired a bump stock before. And the amount of accuracy that he was able to actually fire with with a bump stock is actually quite ridiculous. Also, without having malfunctions and and all this other oh, stuff. Oh right, yeah, totally. Um, because bump stocks are, act to be completely honest, they're one of those they were one of those things that you buy as like, oh, that's I have it, but they're not useful actually for anything, anything other than. Maybe target shooting and no. waste money. Waste money. Yep. Yep. Get as many rounds downrange as fast as possible, not caring about anything else. Right. Um. So. So we know for sure there were at the time sixty victims. I'm saying this with all questions because I have a lot. Like I don't remember the exact numbers off the top of my head. So we're having the tech. 58 at the time of the event or was because i know there was one later down the road or two later down the road 58 at the 59 with the uh, shooter shooter and then whoa right so there was a a victim that in 2019, they say that they, their family says that they passed away due to complications from the shooting, but it's not counted towards the shooting numbers. But either know. way, still worse, mass, the worst mass shooting in U.S. Most, most injuries sustained in a mass shooting. Yeah, so basically, the worst mass shooting in uh, U.S. history. Yes, and I. 418 is what the techie is saying for injuries. But what I was going to say is um, I, I would even almost venture um, without war crimes being committed that's probably the worst mass shooting in the world. Yeah. No, I, I feel like it is as well. Um, I also have no f facts to back that up. But I'm willing to venture that. Yeah, I, it's at least top three, I yeah. would say. Yep. Not totally. including war crimes and all and right. war and, and all yeah, that. I mean, if stuff. we separate the war stuff and atrocities that happen with uh, war related issues, um, that's where we, you know, separate things out. But if we include it, then I don't even think it scratches the top 100. Yeah. So. I guess what we were going to talk about is, is there's a lot of security failures that led up to this. Right. And we, we, I don't want to say we frequent Las Vegas, but we've been there enough to, to notice the, I guess I haven't been there. I wasn't there pre um, shooting, 
but post shooting there are things that you notice you see that um well like m i I don't remember if it's mgm or caesars they have like a tactical swat team that's they have a tactical team that's all they're after like six or seven they're just walking around their properties right um at each property if i remember correctly yeah and then and then at each property as you because you head to the elevators to get off the casino floor um they uh have a security guard checking to make sure you actually have a room i believe most i want to say because i feel like um the times i've been there there's been one or two places that don't have it and i'm not willing to disclose which locations those are well some of those you have to scan on the elevator to go up yeah and that's those not two the, no not, not okay guys that's why i'm hesitant to name that yeah well we don't want to we don't want to throw anybody under a bus or anything no nope, especially since i kind of like them quite a bit so fair enough um so anyway that's that and so the other thing is is this individual barricaded himself in his room uh like severely like um would you say it's almost like in call of duty where you have to build the barricade for the zombies i mean i get where you're trying to go but kind of but not really right yeah but he wedged something in the door and from opening the door and then watch something in there should have been caught on camera too of him tampering right. with the door and stuff um which is another security flaw which is probably because they are i don't know this um but i would assume that they don't have smart camera systems so they're probably manually have to watch all their cameras right and do you think and they really care about what happens in the hallway right exactly they maybe do now but well and there's a lot of security flaws that have been pointed out from inception to right and i also believe prior to that he got super pissed off and got kicked out of the high roller area at the hotel and there was a lot of other things that had happened um i also know from us being in vegas that they got at least um, placards everywhere that says um, something to the effect of that security still has to maintain access to your room or something like that. Yeah, and then there's oh, there's a bunch of and now you they were doing this a little bit before because I know they were a little bit before, but they'll check your access logs and if you don't come out of your room every like like eight hours, they'll go into your room. Make sure you didn't hang yourself or something or kill yourself because I guess that's a big issue. Really? Well, I, I actually, uh, actually, I mean, as you say that, I'm like, oh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense, actually. Because yeah. I'm like, Vegas is a somewhat happy place. But no, when you say it like that, it makes sense. Well, yeah. Especially if you go down there. Well, I mean, yeah, it's just, there's just a lot of issues there and all that other stuff so i mean i guess we can't go back and change what happened but you can learn from what happened and think proactively instead of reactively because the big issue was is they couldn't get to the room and yes he barricaded himself in but they didn't have i personally feel like based off of their response the proper policies and procedures were not in place to manage this risk they didn't really have a risk crisis risk management type thing for that they didn't calculate it as a risk i feel like i I don't think they saw it as a threat either for the fact that they didn't foresee and i mean it's i would it could be even something that's hard to say they foresaw that someone's going to break out a window and open fire on a music festival across the street I think also um, that, you know, it, we know for sure the Caesars Properties has that tactical team. Um, well, I think that's post-shooting, though. Right. And what I'm saying is, so that's now the improvement of, like, those are the guys who are going to respond and deal with that situation. Yeah, but how long are they going to want to pay him for? Exactly. At what point do you say, well, there, we don't see a value 
how long does that memory have to stay etched in your memory? what what how long how long are they willing and what's the ROI right Which, you know so um there was a lot of flaws and failures that happened i think they did a lot of things right for that time right but i also feel like they didn't have the proper maybe not the proper training because right. like the bellhop if you help him take up sixteen thousand bags and he's by himself like and they're heavy uh you know makes you wonder what's in those bags yeah i'm a curious individual so i get it but you know who's also curious about things is our listeners about our sponsors Wow. Wow. And we're back. All right. Thank you, sponsor. Sponsors. Zzz. It's two of them. So, going kind of back to what we were talking about, how there's a lot of failures and stuff, is coming from a professional standpoint, um, no matter what your business is or what you're doing in your in for your business there's always risk of something bad happening right um and we're kind of using these case studies they're not case studies probably not the right term we're just kind of going over the events of what happened and then kind of talking about the security flaws that we see in hindsight and kind of digging more into the facts of it as it happened, which right. I mean, more facts have definitely come out than you probably had even in a month after the event. Exactly. So, um, but it doesn't matter what type of business you're running or what you're doing. You really just need to, it doesn't matter how great your internal team is. And this isn't me trying to say shamelessly plug myself, <laughs> you know, like I'm, I'm being gentle. I'm being genuine when it comes to there's confirmation bias when it comes to your, your own business. Right. Which is definitely a, a risk in itself, which is a risk in itself. But if you, a lot of companies as sad as it sounds, don't even think about risk. Right. They don't even think about, well, what if this happens? And be like in their head, it was like, Oh, that's, there, the chance of that happening is super slim. Well, what if it does happen? What's your plan? Well, you can't. You can't come up with a plan on the spot like that. Because it this. turns from risk to crisis. Right. And you always want to prevent crisis. Right. Because if you manage, if you can manage, manage risk, risk, you can manage, manage the crisis. crisis. Exactly. Um, and planning ahead is super important because piss poor planning. It's piss poor performance. So if you don't plan, you can at least have a skeleton of a plan, loose framework, so you can be, you know, I've talked about this numerous times, but, you know, having that loose plan so you can be flexible because at least then you have an idea instead of you going, oh shit, what do we do besides call 911 and make it someone else's problem? But it's still really at the end of the day is your problem. Well, and it doesn't matter how terrible the event happens. You're also, companies fail to realize that some risks, not all risks are inherently bad. But you need to plan for as many risks as you can be foreseeable, for, be able to foresee as many risks as possible and then have a plan slash a person that will help act on that when something bad happens. Right. So that was a shameless, kind of shameless plug slash not really, but 
businesses need to really be taking a look at, especially post COVID where, I mean, we're still in COVID, but once post COVID happens, really need to take a look at your safety. You definitely need training has to happen again. I think even um, after you look at an incident like the Mandalay Bay or other incidences that you have to reevaluate your training and retrain because you now know something you didn't think about before. So now you have you and, have that knowledge. So now you need to pass that knowledge on how you should handle it. And it's not just a check the box type thing. It's uh, you need actually have quality training, quality policies, and a quality person that's not inside your business. Telling and, you, tell you, and, you, and, and there's nothing wrong against in integrators or other people that manage systems either. But if they're like, oh, we'll offer you a free audit, there's bias as well. Right. They they want to sell you more cameras, more doodads. You don't need all the doodads and all the sensors and all the cameras. You might, but there's a pretty good chance that they're trying to sell you more product. Excess product that you're now just wasting money that they've convinced you when... You know, when they're saying eight cameras can do the job, well, can you get away with doing it with four or something like that? Exactly. Based on the technology of the camera. So make sure if you're going to do something for your business, make sure that they're not getting kickbacks from the who the services they offer for you. Like the integrate, if they're like, hey, go with this integrator to put in these cameras, make sure they're not getting paid by the integrator to recommend them because then that means that they're inherently biased too. Even if they're not, look for somebody that's affiliated with the Independent Security Consultants Association of America, or is it just association? I, I'm not 100% sure, but um, we can post our link in the description as well for you guys if you're in need of that. Or you guys can contact TA Minor Associates as well. They're an independent uh, fee-based consultant. You got it all in the ad read. Exactly. So, um, this episode I think is going to be a little bit shorter. Um, we can't do serious. We can't do serious for too long. Um, I'm already getting a migraine just from being trying to be too serious. I'm literally about ready to fidget. So this is, I think, a good ending spot for us. So we will see you guys on the flippity flip. Deuces.